Well, it didn't take long for the United States to find some reason to complain about the DPRK rocket other than complaining that it was supposedly a missile. Now, the U.S. government is complaining that the North Korean satellite is supposedly out of control, whatever that's supposed to mean, although they haven't been very specific about that. They're saying that uh, it could collide with other satellites and cause all kinds of problems. And this is based on what? U.S. officials speaking on conditions of anonymity. So, in other words, as per usual, it's based on nothing. Now, the U.S. said it could potentially collide with other satellites in orbit and then fall from space and possibly kill somebody. Even though it has relatively the same chance of doing that as any other satellite. And is actually basing this with no information whatsoever. And in fact, not even being, relatively speaking, man enough to just come out and say it. Meanwhile, the South Korean Aerospace Research Institute said the Pyongyang satellite was orbiting between 494 and 588 kilometers above the Earth as predicted. The typical orbiting altitude for an observation satellite is between 480 and 970 kilometers. So basically, according to South Korea, the satellite is exactly where they said it was going to be, and it's exactly in the right area where the rest of the satellites are, where it's supposed to be. Now, the UN has continued to decry this as an act of provocation, that launching the satellite was a violation of UN orders, like it was a violation of the res uh, two particular resolutions, and that the DPRK is breaking the law in doing it. Now, once again, I have previously linked both of those re re resolutions in a video, and the DPRK is not violating either one of them. So I'm just going to come right on and say it. The UN is lying. Now, they've said that they've also are discussing the possibilities of new sanctions to place against the North Korean country in retaliation for launching a satellite into space. Of course, South, Korea, South Korean officials have said that they sincerely doubt that any new sanctions would actually do anything to convince the North Korean government to actually stop its peaceful ex space exploration, which is probably true. It's probably not going to work. Now, Pyongyang is, is continuing to push ahead with its civilian atomic energy program, uh, which it claims is necessary to provide electricity. Now, that is a problem. They do not have enough electrical generation in the country. Uh, normally, this would be done through purchasing more oil, but there is an embargo against them for that and a ton of other things. So they're going to go ahead and pursue a peaceful development of nuclear material for the production of energy. And they're not saying, well, we won't build nuclear weapons. No, they're saying that they will. I mean, it's not, it's not a matter of opinion. They said they are going to do it, and rightfully so. I mean, if the United States can have the world's largest stockpile of nuclear weapons, which is more than capable of destroying the entire world, I believe it was um, 16 times over, then they can't have one in, as a deterrent against somebody invading them. It's, it's, a, ridiculous, uh, it's a ridiculous prospect. This shows that North Korea is not backing down, that they will not be threatened into being uh, uh, technologically backward. They will not be threatened into having a low level of development of electricity. They're just not going to be cowed in this situation. They are standing up for themselves. They are standing out to the world saying that we will do what it is that we think is best for the interests of the North Korean people. And no amount of U.S. imperialism or imperialism by anyone else for that matter is going to stop them from achieving the glory and success that they so rightfully deserve to achieve.